All right, so on the suggestion of a lot of you guys, when I talked about this PNY 4090 card that went into my white build, you guys were like, why don't you paint the shroud? So I figured today we'll take you guys along for the ride of trying to see if I can tear this down and paint the shroud white. So much could go wrong and I'm actually very nervous because I don't want to damage anything on this card. For instance, the integrated RGB lighting there in the front and we've got the one on the top right here. I have no idea how that's held together and I don't want to damage anything. Not to mention I have the fans and stuff which I probably want to try and paint too but then getting paint up inside the bearing and all that would be terrible. So I'm really hoping I don't really screw this up today. CableMod's new StealthSense technology effectively eliminates the need for sense wires for your 40 series GPU. StealthSense features a hidden bridge which signals the GPU that a full 600 watts is available, all without the need for fragile sense wires that can easily be dislodged, leading to a black screen and 100% fans. To see the full spec list and power supplies supported, follow the link in the description below. So first things first, we need a nice soft mat to put down to protect our GPU, I need it right side up. It bothers me if my logo's the wrong way. It'll be upside down for you. Anyway, available on uh, gs2sense.com. So I guess in hindsight, I really should have just bought a white card, but this gives me an opportunity to sort of screw around. What's interesting about the PNY card is it's based on what I found online, it looks like it's a reference board. It's actually a reference board. Um, it's only a little bit more than MSRP. I think the only cards that you really ever find at MSRP these days are gonna be like the Founders Edition cards. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start a tear down. Also too, the iFixit kit, this is what I'm using to tear it down. They're a huge sponsor of ours, but at the same time, and they're not sponsoring this video, I just wanna point this out. These make amazing gifts. Like I'm telling you, they have a bunch of different sizes in terms of small, medium, large, pro kit. If you have somebody that likes to tinker with things in your family, and you're thinking of like, what's the best gift to buy them? By far, an iFixit kit would be one of the best things that you could get them. Uh, anyway, little plug aside. Oh, and there's a link down in the description below to the Amazon store you guys can buy it. It does help out the channel. But uh, they didn't sponsor this. I'm just literally that passionate about the iFixit kits. This should be a pretty easy teardown. I actually already watched a video of a teardown on this. Uh, I think PMY even put one out. Could be wrong. But it seems to be pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna paint the back plate. One reason is uh, paint can actually be an insulator. So I'm only planning on paint, and we actually did a video where I painted a heat sink and we saw that it went up like five or six degrees Celsius by painting it. So when you see black heat sinks and stuff, they're more than likely Cerakoted, which is actually a very good transfer of heat, um, at least a better transfer of heat material. So they don't really affect temperature. So I'm not gonna paint the back plate because I don't feel like if it does have any active cooling for any um, components that are touching the back plate on the back through a heat pad or thermal pad, I don't feel like screwing up that transfer of heat. Not to mention because I have a vertical mount, it's not gonna show anyway. But I have a feeling this could actually end up not working out in my favor today, and then I end up not painting it. If that's the case, then you guys can just downvote this video and be like, this was stupid because you didn't actually end up painting it. But this is kind of, I think, a subject I've seen a lot of people asking about is, is painting my GPU a good idea or not? All right, so I need to undo these plugs right here. So I believe this is gonna be my RGB plug right there. And then these are my two, looks like these are the two plugs for fans. Even though there's three fans, I think one of them might be daisy chained off that, I think. So because I'm gonna be taking the cooler off too, it gives me an opportunity to sort of repaste it with KPX. I do like using Keenpin Extreme Paste. There, okay, so those three wires are free. That should be the only wiring in there, as far as I can tell. All right, so now we're gonna puncture this uh, totally illegal warranty sticker. Actually, it doesn't say warranty void anymore. It's just a sticker so they know if you took it apart, but. Mm-hmm. Magnuson Repair Act. You are allowed to take your stuff apart, and they cannot tell you your warranty is void if you do. It's actually on the brand to prove that whatever you did caused the failure. Unfortunately, brands will continue to do this crap because of the fact that it will cost way more to ever fight them in court for not warrantying your $2,000 graphics card and you'll spend $15,000 in court fees. So I guess it depends on how much a matter of principle matters to you. Okay, there we go. So that's a 4090. <laughs> it's basically a reference card as far as I can tell. Paste application is actually pretty, it's probably screen printed on there. Looks really good though. It's like, doesn't really overhang where we don't want it to, but this is not why we're here today. One thing I like about the iFixit tray too is it works as a pretty decent um, separator for screws. Although we do have their magnet mat as well, but I've just gotten really into the habit of using the lid. 
I'm not sure I even have to take this shroud part off, but I'm going to. Okay, so there's that. So I also recommend taking photos of things along the way, like how cables and stuff are wired, in case you kind of get confused on how things go back together, because trust me, you can't rely on your memory. At least I can't, because I'm old and I'm ancient. Aha. So, it should separate now. Ta-da! Mm -hmm. <gasps> Wait a minute, the lighting looks like it literally just unscrews. <gasps> that's all, that's what I was most worried about, was whether or not the lighting will just unscrew. I was like, please don't be adhesive down. We know how much brands love to use tape these days. <laughs> I was like, please don't be tape. So this wire goes to the RGB. This is the Accelerate logo. And then it's connect, it has a connector right there, but then all of these are soldered together. So I'm gonna make sure these are all unscrewed before go trying to take anything out and it should be good to go after that. You know what, PNY, thank you so much for not using tape. <laughs> that's, that's all I'm gonna say is like, thank you for not using tape because tape would have made this so much unnecessarily difficult. Cause I could have war like heated it up and gotten the tape to come off, but then it, this is just clear or translucent plastic, which would have just cracked or broken if I pulled on it too hard with the tape. This is like I fix it repair score nine out of ten. Yes. That's awesome. There's the lighting. There's my shroud. Now the RTX G GeForce RTX is gonna get covered up, but we could always print another GeForce sticker if we wanted and put it on the white. I really don't care that the GeForce RTX is gonna get covered up. That's an NVIDIA requirement. NVIDIA requires that every card say GeForce RTX or the old ones say GTX on them somewhere. Okay, this is the part I wanted to get to to paint. What I can do is I can paint this first. See how I like it with the black fans. If I don't care for it with that Stormtrooper look, then I can paint the fans after. I would just have to mask the back somehow. Let's paint this first, because this needs time to dry. So first things first, to prep the surface, uh, it's already matte and like very textured, so I'm not too worried. It's part of it's gloss, but that's not gonna be a problem. Um, we wanna prep the surface, so I'm just gonna really kind of douse it in isopropyl alcohol. There is a prep spray that you could use for like, if we were doing this at like automotive shop or something. I'm also wearing these gloves because I don't want to reapply oils to it. Paint jobs usually suck in the prep work, not in the paint application. So it's important to get this as clean as possible. Although this thing has barely been used, I just barely put this in the system. I, uh, I would like it to not look like garbage. <laughs> so this looks like this should be good enough. Now because I'm using a microfiber, I don't want any fibers left behind. So I'm gonna take my little blower fan which I'm not sure where it is at the moment. And I'm gonna just sort of hit it with a little bit of air so that I don't uh, leave any fibers behind that would get baked into the paint, if you will. Or it's referred to as trash in the paint. So for this, I'm just gonna be using the Krylon Fusion all-in-one paint and primer. I've had pretty good luck with this. Uh, it's also a fast drying paint. It's satin white. I didn't want gloss, mostly because it's a textured surface. Um, the biggest issue people have with paint is they apply too heavy of a first coat, that's for sure. And they don't shake it up good enough. Obviously it's got a mixing ball in there, but another thing you wanna to wanna to do is warm up the can. Don't put it under fire. Like don't put it in fire, don't put flame on it. I have used a torch before, but don't do that. A lot of people will like to make a pot of like hot water, not boiling hot, but just hot water, set that in there for a few minutes to warm up the paint. That way it thins the paint out and sprays better so you don't get globs and stuff. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my heat gun and I'm actually gonna point it at the bottom of the can like this, just to warm the can up. And then I'll mix it and keep rattling it up until the can feels warm. Believe it or not, it dissipates heat pretty nicely. So it could be sitting here feeling like super hot. And then as soon as you mix it up, you feel the can go cold. So we wanna do that until the can's no longer going cold. And it's at least on the warm side. We want it warmer than room temp. It's a nice, hot, dry summer day. It's perfect for painting today. If you live in a moist, Sorry, I know people hate that word, but if you live in a, in a damp environment, let's say the Pacific Northwest, or right now anywhere on the Eastern seaboard, <laughs> or anywhere in the South, you guys are dealing with like five pound flying mosquitoes and air that wants to kill you because you can't see through it because it's so thick with humidity. Painting's a difficult thing to do in that environment. So one, I'm just very lucky that I'm not having to deal with that right now, but that means you'll need to mix your paint up even better. And it means your drying times are gonna be longer. The drier the air is, the faster the paint will cure because of the fact that all the moisture is being pulled out of the paint faster. It's called off-gassing. 
So the faster it can off-gas, the better the paint uh, application is going to be and the quality. I can get away with thinner coats, stack up those coats and not have to wait so long in between um, drying time. And then I can get a nice even coat of paint on the piece we want to paint. So the other thing too is people like to get super impatient. They go, okay, I waited five minutes, I want to spray more. Then what happens is you have a wet coat underneath a wet coat. Then you start to get these layers built up of different uh, drynesses. And that's where you start to have problems where the top layers end up actually never fully curing or drying because the layers underneath them are constantly off-gassing. So thin, even coats is the, the key to this. Other thing too is you need proper ventilation. So you can see we're putting a box fan right here in the door just to promote getting some of these fumes out. I have a second fan right there, which is actually a very high velocity fan, which we'll use if we need. Um, and then I've got this really cheap. It was like 15 bucks on Amazon. I'll try to remember to put a link down below. This is actually a clothes hanging rack. I definitely wouldn't be able to hang my clothes. I'm a fat boy, so my clothes are heavy, but it's perfect for hanging parts on. It has paint all over it because every painting project I've ever done, I have used to hang parts on. So what we want to do is find a spot that we can hook this on nicely where it's not going to fall off. And yeah, it's probably going to leave a mark where paint doesn't get to. That's why when we do the next coat, I'll flip it. That way I can make sure that I'm spraying upright because this is an aerosol can. So I want to not have to be spraying down. I want it upright. That's how I'm going to be able to get the best paint out of it. Another thing we want to do, let's use the trash can here. Spray it a little bit first to sort of get it going rather than any of the globs that were stuck in the neck or the, the tube are gone. There's no going back now. You can see some of those globs are coming out right now, but we're going to be covering all that up. That's fine. So again, I'm just trying to get a nice thin coat applied to, in all directions. That way we can get this paint curing and sticking to the plastic so our next coats of paint stick to the paint. That's what we want. Okay, that's good for a first coat. You can see obviously there's a lot of black showing through. This will dry very quickly and I'm gonna get it near the door. I don't wanna put it in the sun. Believe it or not, the sun heat with how hot it is today, it's 104 degrees Fahrenheit. That's this much in other units. And that would actually cause problem for our paint. It would get it too hot. So this paint dries best in dry environment out of the sun. So that's why I have it near the door to get some of this airflow right here. But I'm going to give this like 15 minutes before we come back and paint again. Okay, so this coat is dry. Yes, my hands are also bare. I took my gloves off. I'm just going to touch it on the corners. And I'm flipping it over like I said because you can kind of see right there there's a line from where the hook was holding it. So I need to obviously make sure that's covered up. Now, unless something changes along the way and something goes terribly wrong, I'm gonna repeat this process probably five or six times. So rather than taking you guys through every single step, I'm gonna just show you what it looks like after each step and then we'll just kind of jump cut that so you can see how the progression goes. And I'm gonna go a little heavier this time because now we have some paint that's adhered to it. But I'm still not trying to get full coverage in one coat or two coats, that's not gonna be possible. There we go. Um, it's a little bit warmer of a white than the rest of the whites in the part or in the PC. I'm okay with that, honestly. I mean, there is actually some like pure white type of paint that I can get from uh, actually some of the like Tamiya paints I use in model stuff. More like a glacier white, I guess, where it's gonna be whiter than this, not quite so off-white or eggshell. But I can take this back apart later and apply that if I want. The GeForce logo is almost completely ghosted out, but it's slightly raised. So that's why you're kind of always going to see it, but that's okay. This is the way it looks with the black fans. We've all kind of been thinking, let's just leave it like this. It, it, I think it would look better than being all white. And then we do have the, uh, we use our Cricut to make new stickers, white stickers for the top of the fans. Uh, I think the white will look good. If I don't, we can just make black ones. We have black ones as well. So what I'm going to do now is before I put this back together, I'm going to go ahead and apply the stickers to the fans and then I'll get to obviously um, repaste it with my KPX stuff, which will be kind of neat because I, I like using KPX on my graphics cards. 
or anything actually. Let's just make sure this completely blacks out the... So I put two white stickers on, got that one pretty centered. This one has a little wobble. Well, the fan shot's not centered, but anyway, it has a little wobble to it because the stick, like the plastic disc itself is not perfectly centered. But then I did a black one in the middle just to see, and we're kind of feeling like black is the way to go, I think. The, the white one just, like Phil said, it just looks like we took paper and we're like, and stuck it on there. So I'm gonna switch these to black. I'm gonna put the GPU back together and we'll put it back in the system and see. All in cost on this, seven bucks the cost of a can of paint, essentially. I mean, you don't need to have the rack like I use. Um, it's just a nice to have to make the job easier. But again, that's like, if you're gonna be painting multiple things or you wanna start like doing painting projects, it's gonna definitely be in your best interest to have a rack or something like that to hang your, your parts on. And then the paint was just cheap, that's it. It was just regular Krylon all-in-one. So, uh, and then obviously these stickers, the Cricut machine, you know, <laughs> that has some cost. But these, I don't think, are typically a problem because most fans don't have ugly red Accelerate logos in the middle of them. That's better. <laughs> and so this is normally not necessary. This is the first time I've actually done this to a GPU. Normally I do this to, like, PC fans that have a stupid color logo in the middle, like my Be Quiet fans that I had for a while had the orange Be Quiet logo. And so that bothered me because it said be quiet in orange on the fan and then you'd see it turning and I hated that because my build had no orange in it. So there we go. Now if I put the fan shroud back on. Now it's just this really neat stormtrooper-y two-tone look. Okay, I'm gonna put it back together and then we'll get it in the system and I'll show you what it looks like with it off so you can see the off-white color I was talking about. And then I'll turn on the system and you'll see all of that will go away. It won't matter because all of the light being casted on from the, the RGB lighting is gonna wash all that out anyway. Okay, so it's installed back in my work system here. You can see what I mean about it's a much more warm white than everything else in here. If it starts to bother me, I can definitely take this off and paint it again uh, with a more, like I said, more of an ice white, if you will. I think this has a little, whatever this paint formula is, has a little bit more red in it than say any of this does. Maybe it needs more blue, but there's tons of shades of white I could choose from. This is just what I had on hand. Now that I know I can tear down the shroud and get it apart, um, you guys saw the process on how to do it. But once I turn on the system, honestly, and then we get all of that um, color fill in there, it's really gonna just, as you can see, sort of blend in now. Especially now that we have this nice ice kind of white color going on with the X there. So, once this boots into my OS too, I don't have white lighting for it. I have blue lighting. Like it's like a real, like I said, almost like a glacier blue, I guess. So now it's a little less obvious, I think, because we don't have as much of that white to compare it to. We just have the blue cast on everything and then we have the white here on the GPU. I feel like I need to redo my colors now though, because, ow, that's turning. <laughs> I, uh, I think I did a pretty good job too at centering those stickers, by the way. But uh, I had made these colors look like something that would contrast well with the black on the initial build. I'm probably gonna go to blue now on these. So I'll change that. Anyway, there you go. Uh, a lot of people suggested, Jay, why don't you just paint the shroud when I said I wish it was white. So I'm glad I did. This paint will take about 24 hours to cure. So I'm actually gonna leave the system on with the fans blowing because that'll actually help cure and get some of that uh, airflow, which will, which will help dry it out. And then I might, I did it again. I, they stick up a little above these like, indents so i keep touching where it's the low spot anyway i'll probably end up going ahead and doing an, like one or two top coats with the color that i want uh the, the more crisp white i don't know what, what to call it i don't know what to call it it's just less warm if you will but this isn't about whether or not it matches perfectly it's about the process of painting your gpu shroud and as long as your shroud comes apart and the rgb strips aren't glued in there like so many brands do this would be a pretty easy straightforward job so there you go. You guys suggested it. I did it. I'm happy with the way it turned out. I have no regrets at all at doing this. Although it was scary because it is a $1,789 graphics card. That's how much I paid for it. That I was taking apart going, if this turns out like crap, it's going in some sort of a rustic build where I'm just gonna weather the crap out of it and then call it a feature <laughs> because there was no going back. Once you put that spray paint on there, there's no taking it off without damaging the plastic underneath. It's not like it's metal. So, all right guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.